we could demonstrate this. Could I use you as a Absolutely. as an instrument for teaching, maybe? Yeah. Love it. This is a privilege as a teacher. <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what to do, Bill. I hope you okay, won't I'll, I'll try. Try. Because. Try to do it. Some of the term jazz is a nebulous term. And if we assume now that we do know nothing about jazz. Mm. Bill, would you play just a simple melody of Star Eyes? No harmonics. Uh -huh. Nothing but the simple melody. Repeat the same eight measures, and we'll call this letter A again. Only this time, Bill, put the basic harmonies in this tune to that melody. Stop again. Now we have eight measures and eight measures. A, A. And now we come to what the musician usually terms the bridge. Or we'll call this letter B, which is a different section, eight measures long. Now play letter B, Bill, or the bridge. go back to the first eight measures and we call that A again. It's a repeat on the first eight measures, so let's now play eight measures more. simply by your terms, I know. Nevertheless, you had harmonies going, which were certainly harmonies in depth and complicated. <laughs> Being a pianist, I know that harmonically there was something going on that was not as it was written, mm -hmm. which immediately is an approach you use to harmonics. <clears throat> so we take just the first two measures, or the, the very first phrase of the tune, play the, just the melody, Bill, the first mm -hmm. few notes. that much again and just put the very simple chord underneath it as it was written. Play it again, simply, just like that. Just... All right, I think here we get to jazz because are we content to play this tune with this harmonic structure over and over again, maybe a hundred times, maybe a thousand times in our lives and play it exactly like that? Now, Bill, play it again, only put your own harmonies underneath it. Even though the harmonies are beautiful, that bill that you're using, and they're certainly beautiful, but nevertheless, these harmonies would even become, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, static, or you wouldn't play it this way each time, a hundred times, or a thousand times. The melody would be on top. So possibly, since you've deviated and created your own harmonics underneath the melody, now we can go ahead and create something on top of the melody itself, getting into the second element of music, melody. So now we could change the melody as we've changed the harmony. So how about improvising, taking the same first eight measures, letter A, and improvise on that melody and do us a favor, all of us, by returning to the melody every so often so we know where you are or to identify right. the melody.
I think here we've covered already the three elements of music. Rhythm, harmony, and melody. And I think it's noteworthy to note that the jazz musician has changed every element. First of all, you changed the rhythm. You improvised on the melody. It was basically there all the time. But of course, you impose, uh, superimposed your own melody on top of it. And we've changed the harmonies. So possibly you could discuss it from your point of view, Bill. Yeah. From the artist's point of view. And, uh, well, let's go back you, to you all right? Let's go back to it. Of course, jazz works within a framework, but nevertheless, it has afforded a, a great amount of freedom to the musician. Mozart, of course, loved to improvise because it was free, yeah. and Bach, and uh, and I and I feel this is a, a strong element in jazz. This is freedom, this spontaneous creativity. Well, I think for one thing, it's very important to to remember that no matter how far I uh, might uh, diverge or or find freedom in this uh, format that it only is free insofar as it has reference to the strictness of the original form and that's what gives it its strength in mm -hmm. other words uh there is no freedom without uh, uh being in reference to something now if you take this form in this strict form and you find some way to get away from it mm -hmm. and that gives it a meaning so uh in other words you're saying before you can depart from something, there has to be something existing there. There reference. has to be something existing there, and if the person hears the way the, the player is playing, in other words, when I'm playing, I'm playing everything I play against the strict squareness of the original right. form, see.